real estate investing should be part of your portfolio as your wealth accumulation strategy. In this episode, we'll talk about condominiums. And if this is the first time that we're meeting each other, my name is Leigh and I will walk you to the process of buying, selling, and financing real estate in the greater Toronto area. Prior to May 5th of 2001, there was only one type of condominium and that is built on a freehold land with units and common elements. This type of condominium becomes part of the Condominium Act of 1998 as a standard condominium. On May 5th of 2001, they added four additional types of condominiums. So what are they? We have the phase condominium. Phase condominiums, these are the type of uh, condominiums that developer built in phases. So for example, they have two to three buildings that are, they are building in batches and they will share uh, common amenities when they complete it. So phase condominiums becomes a standard condominium when they are finished. Number three is the vacant land condominiums. So as the word suggests, these are the lots that the builders sell and it's restricted to the number of size and uh, the types of um, usage for that particular lot so that they will have consistency. Next is the common element condo. So these are properties that are built as a freehold but they are tied to a common element such as the roads. And then we have the leasehold condominium. The difference between a leasehold condominium and the standard condominium is that leasehold condominiums are built on a leased land. So that means it can be from 40 or 99 years. So the common element or we call the maintenance fee factors in the rent for that particular land and this is uh, sent to the landowner. So at the end of 40 years, sometimes you can renew it or on 99th year. So once that's finished and the landowner didn't want to renew, then you lost your property. <laughs> now let's concentrate on the two types of condominium as I said earlier, the standard condominium and the common element. So the difference between the two is that on the standard condominium, so you have, you're probably most familiar with this one, as you know, uh, these are the units that you that are built on one building and they share a common amenity, say, visitors parking, a swimming pool, um, common elements such as party rooms, and so on and so forth. They compute the maintenance fee or what you call condo fee or common element fee based on the square footage of your house. So typical condo fee right now on a new or pre-construction condos are somewhere around 50 cents per square footage. So for example, if you are buying a thousand square foot of unit, then you will pay somewhere about $500 per month as a starting maintenance fee. As you know, the maintenance, uh, they, they go up in value somewhere between 2% to 5% every year because the maintenance of these buildings go up as well. The maintenance fee is what is being used by the condominium corporation to maintain your condo, say cleaning the building uh, and other maintenance that they do. Common element condos means that the house, the property that's built on this type of condominiums are freehold but they are tied on a common element such as the access roads. So with these types of condominium, the difference between a common element and a regular or a standard condominium is that the maintenance fee is only allocated for maintaining the roads, uh, garbage collection, summer uh, maintenance, 
winter maintenance and that's it so the house itself is freehold so whatever uh, maintenance that you need to put in that you have to pay it yourself whereas with using a standard condominium so let's say if you broke your window if you need some roof then it will be taken care of by the condo corporation so now in terms of uh, common element fee because you are only getting the maintenance for the road and the garbage disposal for a common element so the the fee is somewhat lower so i've seen somewhere around 150 to probably 250 dollars and in standard condominium it can go higher depending on what amenities are shared and let's say utilities are also shared so what i notice is if there is a swimming pool because it takes a higher amount of money to maintain this the common element is kind of higher in terms of um, maintenance fees so if you are budget conscious and you're thinking of buying a, a standard condominium but you don't really use the swimming pool so look for something that doesn't have that so that your common element fee will not go up as much also look for those condominiums that do not have the utilities in the maintenance fee because you know people think that it's free so some people will just spend it as it is or they don't take care of their utilities they just leave it on like say they leave their electricity on the whole day because thinking that it's free but at the end of the year whatever expenses that was spent on this will be shared among the unit holders now that you know what you need to know about common elements and standard condominium check out my other videos about pre-construction condo where i speak about things that you need to know when you are purchasing a pre-construction condo and also what are the closing costs that you need to save for when you're purchasing a pre-construction because they are different from a resale and also about the two closing dates that you need to know when you bought a pre-construction condo my name is Leigh Villar Cisneros with Ride at Home Realty and if you or someone you know is looking to move anywhere in the greater Toronto area, give us a call, text or email us, whatever works for you and we'll make your moving experience a breeze. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next Thursday. Bye for now. Don't forget to share.